Have you been hearing a lot of chatter about the almighty AI chat GPT coming to steal your Salesforce jobs? Well, me being who I am, I definitely had to check this out. So what chat GPT is, is an AI chat bot that you ask it questions and it will spit back out answers for you. Sounds simple enough, sounds like Google, but what the really cool thing is, is that it's conversational and it remembers some of the context of what you're talking about. So already pretty cool there. And then on top of that, it can write code. In this video, I'm gonna check out what ChatGPT can do in the Salesforce context and beyond. I also brought a special guest who's never used ChatGPT before to be a sounding board, another person to pitch ideas, should be fun. Let's get to it. All right, well, now we're stepping into the realm of code. Uh, so I think everything beyond this will probably, you know, talk more or we're gonna ask it more code related questions um, and then also try to follow up. So giving it some potentially easy stuff, but you know, we've got this null pointer exception that I gracefully just pulled online and we're, we're going to see how it would deal with it. So ideally, maybe you've run into an error in your code and um, you just pop it in the chat GPT or in the new search, right? Um, and and it will hopefully Google tell killer. you how to how to solve it. This may be due to a mistake in your code. <laughs> Dang, they're just roasting our code. So there's a missing argument or a typo in a variable. Yeah, okay. Wow, it's literally telling you how to solve a null pointer. Mm. Determine why the, it's giving us step by step. Look, look at this line, check why it's null, and then fix your. <laughs> this is how you fix it. This is literally how you fix it. Like, you, like when somebody comes to you and says, "Oh my, like a you know an admin that you wrote some code for or whatever," it like they found a way to break it or whatever, and they're like, "It's a null pointer." You got to go and follow this process. This okay. That process. Okay. Okay. So I think we should potentially just, this will probably be for later on because I don't know if we have it prepared, but um, just find a, a, either make a snippet of code or find a snippet of code that resolves or throws a null pointer exception and then see if it can fix it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's see how it's going to deal with this one. So th we've got a mixed DML error. Um, Chase, when do mixed DML errors happen? You get a mixed DML error if you try to do a system object, like a user or a user role, or uh, if you try to do DML operations on that, and then you try to, in the same transaction, uh, do uh, a regular S object, like an account or a contact, like update it, insert it, delete it. You can get a mixed DML error. Usually this happens in testing contexts mm -hmm. where you're inserting a user, but it can happen if you're running some specific code. Yeah, Let's so I, I think the split is like the system objects versus the non-system objects. Um, and then, yeah, let's see if it can actually, I'm looking at the whoa, to whoa, solve whoa. this, right? Hold on, they might be showing some new stuff. A setup object, a system object, setup object. Oh, perfect, so like yeah. Same thing. This is a not allowed, it caused data integrity issues, not a best practice. So they just don't let you, that's all true. And also use the read only annotation to prevent a transaction. I didn't even know that. I have never used that. Is that this thing? This thing's smarter than us. <laughs> I mean, it knows more documentation than we do. Yeah, that that's true. Um, oh, look! It gives you an example: invoice statement, a custom object, and user. Oh man, this is split this your code is into slick. separate transactions. I'm I'm gonna do a follow up here. Hold on. How do I split my code into separate transactions? It, it should give you like three different ways, or maybe it'll probably say future. It'll probably say future method. All right, when you're done reading, I'm gonna gonna fire this well, one off. Yeah, I don't have any other comments. I mean, that is the way you do it, but I I it, I'm, I think I could have given a better answer as a human than that. If if a junior comes to me and asks me that, I'll ask them where is it happening to you at in like actual code or in like a, uh, something else. Context. Yeah, yeah. And I would know how to guide them a little better than this. So this is not a great answer, but it's a okay answer. Yeah, because oftentimes you will just get like a paste, right? It's like, oh, I'm getting this error. Um, and more, I guess, as a human, you kind of skip past the, okay, well, these are the kind of the steps you have to do and go more into how do I mm -hmm. solve this? Um, and how do you actually solve it, right? So maybe potentially right now we're not asking it the right questions, 
to make it, you know, spit this out. Oh my gosh, it's writing code. Um, to spit it out, but there we go. Buckle up. Yeah. Oh, database on save point. Oh. I'm digging the save points. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just gonna try catch. No, you're not writing try catch box right now. Where you? is it getting this from? Though it's just like. Whoa. No, I don't think. Okay, I've rarely seen people use save points. I do this. I rarely use save points. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, slow down, slow down. Hold up. Did it do it right? Some of these things we're gonna have to take offline and Start test. Start a new transaction. So, update. does this actually work? That, literally, that was my next question because it it may just be confusing the save points as different transactions versus the the DML. That's not my answer to this. Yeah, this is totally backwards. I don't think it. Got, I don't think it gets it. Mm-hmm. I don't think this works. If I, I think, if I if, put money on it, this is not it. Yeah, yeah. I um, I, I don't think so. Right, right out the gate, I don't think this is gonna work. But I would, I would love oh. it to work. I would love it to work. But anyway, if you were to solve this, Chase, what would you do? So what you got to do is you got in order to start a separate transaction, you need to do it in a separate thread. The way to call a separate thread in Apex is you can use asynchronous methods. So you've got, you know. Your queuables, which is my first choice at this point. Future, um, future, future fan. Your methods, if you're if you're just trying to get it done quick and dirty, and in the same. Uh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Don't teach kids to write future methods. Future queuable is so extensible. Anyway, uh, you got to write a future method, pretty much, to just go and do your setup object in the main transaction, and then hopefully follow up immediately after. But if the database rollback thing works for some reason. Like if you set a save point, that would be awesome. I just have never seen that. Um, I don't trust this though, because it doesn't understand that the custom object is not going to be a setup object Mm -hmm. and that the user, I mean, if you read it here, it says this transaction is used to update the non setup object, the user object in this case right there. Mm -hmm. That's just not true. The user is the setup object. Okay. So it's confused. So I mean, a little rocky right now, but it's, that's a tough question. Th- that it definitely because you know, it it knows the steps up here to kind of solve it. One we've got to look into. So a couple things we got to look into, right? The the read only annotation, and then if the save points actually work, because just I don't know about it. But these steps are are pretty solid, right? And then we right. we asked it kind of a hard question, right? Like how do you how do you actually do it? Like what's the code look like for it? So. It's trying. It just, I think it's just confusing save points and the tra- like what the save point transactions do, which, and, and what they think the starting the new transaction is with like an asynchronous method with step, step two. What's here. really incredible also is the comments, mm-hmm. like to walk you through it so that you can reference what part of, I think that's kind of cool yeah. personally. I don't know if that's like the most incredible thing, but. Anyway, it's 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 really cool. It's really cool. In terms of error handling, chat GPT is not all there just yet. We didn't ask it potentially the right question. So we'll need to potentially do some follow up with that and maybe paste in some code that has an error and see if it can figure it out. But overall, just, you know, copy pasting some errors in from Salesforce. It's struggling a little bit. And that's probably because Apex is a little bit of a niche language. So it needs a lot more information to train on. This is still a really cool tool and it could help in certain situations. You know, we've got a lot more questions that we're going to ask it and potentially break down. And if you have questions for us, let us know in the comments below and we'll check them out and analyze how well ChatGPT does. Don't miss out on the next video that we did where we asked ChatGPT to write an Apex trigger or the previous one where we asked it some admin questions like creating a validation rules. As always, I'm Walters954. Thanks so much for watching. And remember, I believe in you.